This lecture is part of an online course on algebraic geometry about schemes, and we will be talking about what happens to sheaves if you've got a map between two topological spaces. So suppose F is a continuous map from a topological space to a topological space to another topological space. So, so far in the first three lectures, we were discussing sheaves on just one topological space, now we want to talk about moving sheaths from one space to another. So we've got these two categories. We've got sheaves on X and we've got sheaves on Y. So for the moment, I think we'll mostly talk about sheaves of abelian groups, although there are modifications that work for sheaves of sets. And we're going to define two functors between these categories. One will take a sheaf on X to a sheaf on Y and would be called F subscript star. And the other will take sheaves on Y to sheaves on X and will be called F to the minus one. And if you've come across category theory, you may be wondering why this is called F to the minus one and not F superscript star, which would be a more obvious notation. And the answer is that F superscript star is used for a different map later on. Um, roughly speaking, the difference is that F the minus one is used for sheaves of abelian groups. However, the important thing turns out to be sheaves of modules over a certain sheaf of rings. And for that one, you would use the map uh, as a a different map F of a star is, is used. So that's why we use this slightly non-symmetric notation. Um, so um, we remember there are two different ways of viewing sheaves. So a sheaf can either be a map F from um, open sets U to an abelian group F of U. Or we can think of it as being sort of a, 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 an etal space over X. So we have a map from A to X. And F of U for U contained in X is now sections of A to X. And these two ways of thinking about a sheaf are rather useful for these two different ways of um, um, moving sheaves from one space to another. In particular, if we think of F as being a map from open spaces to abelian groups, then it's easier to define this map. Whereas if we think of F as corresponding to an etal space, it's easier to define this map. And it's kind of rather hard harder to define these two maps using, if, using the other interpretations. So let's first define F star, F lower star. So here F is a sheaf on X, F is a map from X to Y, and F star F will be a sheaf on Y. Now to define it, we need to say what F star of F is on an open set U. So we just say F star of F of u, so u is a subset of y, is, um, is equal to f of f to the minus 1 u. So this looks a bit confusing when you first come across it. So let's try and draw a picture. So we've got a set u here contained in y. And we can form the inverse image f to the minus 1 u here. So this is now an open set of X. And all we're doing is saying that the sheaf, this sheaf, the value of the sheaf, this sheaf on U is the value of this sheaf here on X, which is a reasonably natural thing to do if somewhat confusing. So that sheaf on U is that sheaf on X. And that's all that this, this formula says. Um, so let's have an example. Suppose we take y to be a point. So we've got a map from x to a point. And suppose we've got a sheaf on x. What is f star of f? 
Well, a point um, only has one non-empty open set. So a sheaf on a point is really just a group. We just take the value of the sheaf at that point. Um, so, and its value at the point is just um, the, the value of f on the whole of x. So, so f, f star f of the point is just f of x. So this is global sections. By the way, we see from this that um, f star does not preserve surjections. In other words, if f1 to f2 is a map of sheaves that, that, that are on two, f star of f1 mapping to f star of f2 need not be on two. We saw several examples of this in the previous lecture where um, a map of sheaves could be on two, but the set of sections over some open set wasn't necessarily on two. Um, and um, it's useful to know when this map F star preserves exactness. So suppose we've got a map of sheaves naught to A goes to B goes to C goes to naught on X. Um, and we have this map F X to Y. So we have naught goes to F star A goes to F star B goes to F star C goes to naught. And as we said, this need not be exact here. So we should really cross off this zero. So, so it's not exact. However, the rest of it is exact, um, even if we omit this uh, bit here. So, so, so this is exact. Um, and recall this exactness for sheaves can be defined as just saying it's exact from all the fibers over these points. Um, so we can show that this bit is exact in two ways. We're first going to do it just straight from the definitions and later we'll have a slightly neater way using a jointness. So, so here we're looking at f, x to y and we need to know what the fibers look like. So suppose y looks like this and here is a point p of y and x might look something like this mapping onto y and it's got a um, fiber f minus one of p. And now we want to know what is the fiber of f star a, let's put it f star b, um, at p. Um, well, its elements are represented by taking a small open set u around p and um, So that these elements are given by elements of um, f star of u, where p is contained in u. And um, remember, there's, there's this equivalence relation on elements that they're, the, they're considered to be the same if, if they're the same on a smaller open set of u and so on. So, so we should do something about taking direct limits. But Let's not worry about that too much. We can specify an element of the fiber just by giving an open set U and an element of this. So what is this? Well, this is just an element of F of, <coughs> so big F of, um, uh, sorry, that should be F star F of U. Um, so these are given by elements of F of U, uh, so F of, f to the minus one u. There are too many f's here. So what that means is we take this open set u and we take its inverse image here. And this is going to be f to the minus one u. And we want to take the values of the sheaf big F on this. Um, so um, if we've got an exact sequence, naught goes to a, goes to b, goes to c, goes to naught of sheaves on x, um, then, um, and, and we take an element of f 
star f, um, f star of b, um, we can look at its fiber over p, and the fiber is just going to be some, uh, an element of the fiber can be represented by a section of um, the sheaf b over this set here. Now, if it is image um, zero here, then that means all the fibers must have image equal to zero in the fibers of C, which must mean, mean they're in the image of the fibers of A, which means that um, this section here is actually the image of a section in, in A, which means that um, um, if, if something in F star B has image zero in F star C, then it's actually the image of something in F star A. So um, if this sequence of sheaves on X is exact, then naught goes to F star A, goes to F star B, goes to F star C is also exact. Um, so next we're going to look at maps that go in the other direction. So this time we have a map from X to Y and we've got a sheaf G on Y. And we're going to try and find a sheaf F to the minus one of G, which will be a sheaf on X. And how do we do this? Well, we remember the sheaf G on Y corresponds to an Natal space over Y. Never get the L's and the T's the right way around in Natal. So this is Natal over Y. In other words, it's a local homeomorphism. And now we can pull it back to get a, um, an Natal space over X just by taking B times over Y of X. So this is the pullback, and it consists of the, the, the subset of B times x um, of points b x which have the same image in in y um, so another way of thinking about this is um, suppose um, we take a point p of x and then we can look at the point f p as a point in y and all we're saying is the fiber over P is the same of, of, of this space here is the same as the fiber of FP. Sorry, it's the same as the fiber of B over FP. So we're sort of pulling back the fibers. And you can easily check that if B is a tile over Y, then this pullback is a tile over X. So it gives a sheaf. And um, F to the minus one of G is the sheaf. Of, of the Atal space from B times over Y, X goes to X. So from the point of view of Atal spaces, um, this operation F to the minus one is a very natural operation. It's rather more complicated to define if you think of a sheaf as being a map from open sets to abelian groups. I think Hartshorn gives this alternative definition. Um, well, you remember the map F lower star was not always exact. Um, F to the minus one preserves exactness. And this is almost obvious because we're defining F to the minus one by just pulling back fibers of Ital spaces and exactness of sheaves can be tested by looking at whether it's exact on, on all the stalks of the sheaf. So if you're just pulling back the stalk then a set of stalks that are exact will still be exact if you if you pull them back here. Um, so um, we should give an example. Suppose that X is actually a subset of Y. So F is just um, the identity map on X is a subset of Y. And if, if G is a sheaf on Y, we can ask what is 
f to the minus one of uh, the sheaf g. So you can think of this as being a restriction of um, g to x. And the fibers of this are very easy. The fiber of f to the minus one g at p in x is the same as the fiber of g at p in y. So it's just almost the most trivial possible thing you could do to um, get a sheaf on x. Um, um, next, there is a relation between um, f star and f minus one. Um, more precisely, f the minus one is left a joint to f lower star. Um, what this means is as follows. Uh, this is always a little bit confusing that we hope I try and get it the right way around. So suppose you've got um, the map from x to y and f is a sheaf on x and g is a sheaf on y. Then you can look at f to the minus one g, which will be a sheaf on x. Um, and um, you can also look at um, f star of f, which will be a sheaf on y. And the relation between these is as follows. On x, we have a map from f to the minus 1g. You, you can consider maps from f to the minus 1g to x. And over y, you can consider maps from g to f star of f. And um, informally, we say that these two are a joint if these two sorts of maps are really the same. In other words, a map from G to F star, F lower star of F is sort of the same as a map from F to the minus one G to F. That there's a natural, um, there's a natural bijection between these sets. In order to define natural bijection, you can go and look at a book of category theory because whenever I give this definition, I always get completely muddled. Um, um, one way of seeing this is that, is that both maps, maps from G to F star of F and maps from F to the minus one G of F are the same as collections of maps from G of V to F of U whenever um, we have open sets U contained in X, V contained in Y with F of U contained in V. And furthermore, these um, maps have to be compatible with the restriction homomorphisms. In other words, if you've got a map um, V prime uh, contained in V and U prime contained in U, then you get all the usual maps. You get G V prime goes to F uh, U prime, I should have said, um, F of U prime should be contained in V prime. And then we have restriction maps going one way or the other, I think they go this way. So there's a restriction map there and there's a restriction map there. So for each U in X and V in Y, such that F of U is in V, you, 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 you are given a map from this space to this space, which are commute with all these restriction maps. Um, if you enjoy this sort of abstract definition, you should really go and study the theory of stacks, which um, is even more complicated and abstract than this. Um, anyway, um, left of joints and right of joints have the following nice property that if um, a functor um, A is left of joint to B, then A preserves right. exactness and B preserves left exactness. Um, you notice that this is yes another case when terminology has been messed up because left adjoints preserve right exactness and right adjoints preserve left exactness. So what this means when it, preserving right exactness means that if um, A 
goes to B goes to C goes to naught is exact, then A of A goes to A of B goes to A of C goes to naught is exact. And left exactness is the same, except we put the zero on the left. So um, um, to apply this, we know that f to the minus one is left adjoint to f lower star. So f lower star is right exact. So, so, so sorry, f lower star is a right adjoint. So it is left exact, which is what we showed earlier. And we see that this is automatically right exact. Um, so the right exactness of f to the minus one and the left exactness of f star follow for sort of trivial category theoretic reasons that there are joints to each other. In fact, we get a bit more because f to the minus one is not just right exact, it is in fact exact. So um, um, we, we, we get a surprise extra left exactness of this, which we couldn't guess from this, this all this categorical nonsense. Um, the failure of F star to be right exact is of major importance. Um, there's the entire subject of sheaf cohomology is entirely for the purpose of trying to fix the fact that this functor here is not right exact. Um, for example, if we have a sequence of sheaves over some space and we apply F star to it, then um, homology theory tells us what group we have to put here in order to extend this exact sequence further. And um, then higher cohomology groups give more and more complicated um, sets there. So that's the topic of chapter three in Hartshorn, which we won't be getting to in this particular series of lectures. Okay, that's quite enough abstract nonsense about sheaves. So next lecture, we're going to define, um, we're, we're going to start the definition of a scheme.